Uh oh. About to turn into a boxing match, and I have ringside seats. You know the camera's on. We're filming, right? Ooh. 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 Rosanna, thank you, babe. I love no, you. No, I love you more than anything. Lisa Fortunato, Nicole. Fuck with you. Are you crazy? Rosanna, we never met Louie. I mean, could she just not say, I'm just so happy my sister-in-law is here and that we're moving. My sister-in-law from California. My sister-in-law from California. Not Melissa. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 13. And all I can say is Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. I mean, I feel like this is like really the era. Uh, we're in our hot mic era, and a lot of the girls are getting caught up. Like, I don't see how. Okay, your husband called you, you, and if you knew that he was already talking about da 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 da, like, I, I, I thought like she wanted this to happen. But y'all, let's get into the video call. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into it. Yeah, let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out I'm a flame and if you wanna play with me, you can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. Um, they have dropped the reunion looks, and can I just say that the women actually look amazing. I feel like New Jersey is never known for their fashions, right? But I feel like the women have, I would say half of them had great looks. The other half, yeah. But, you know, nobody looked like just horrible, right? Okay. So, Teresa, I feel like for me, Teresa looked drop dead gorgeous. The short hair on her, it looks short from the picture, but she looked drop dead gorgeous. Her body looks amazing. Um, the yellow on her just made her look amazing. So, Teresa was my number one. Then after Teresa, for me, was Dolores. Dolores' body was banging. You can't tell me that Dolores is not a black woman. One, two, what is she? Um, number three for me is Danielle. I feel like Danielle, she owned that dress, the way she posed in it, how her hair was. Um, I feel like she looked really good. I feel like the only thing about Danielle's look was I feel like in the face it did age her a little bit, but other than that, she looks amazing. Like, I mean, I'm not a fashionista, so I can't really talk. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel looked good too. Um, it gave very much, you know, Belle, you know, Beauty and the Beast, gave very much that. That Jennifer Aiden, Jennifer looks amazing. I feel like she's wearing, um, it's something like, you know, different from what she usually wear in her reunions. It gives like a little throwback to her season one. Um, but other than that, Jennifer looks looks great. Margaret. Um, it was like, you know, it was okay, but you know, yeah. So when I say Melissa looked good, but when I saw the picture of her with the with the hood on her dress, it reminded me of um, Lauren Lowe from Bagger Club. She said, why you just got a collar? Why you just got a collar? It's like, why you just got a hood? Um, and then Jen Fessler and Jackie just looked like they just showed up to dinner. It was nothing, gave nothing like, <gasps> it was just very much regular degular, so, yeah. But let's get into the episode, y'all. So we start the episode out at Danielle's house. Danielle, on her mother comes over. She talks to her husband and her mom basically about the whole trip. It's just like how, you know, the girls have me coming at me left and right. I'm over here trying to dodge haymakers and this, that, and the third. In Ireland, Margaret and Rachel coming at me. I was like bobbing and weaving. I was like Muhammad Ali out there, you know, trying to block sh left and right. I and then her mother, you know, was trying to give her advice because she told her mom, like, yeah, you know, Melissa, we hear this rumor from basically Laura, which is Margaret's ex-best friend, and basically Margaret was telling people that um, they, sh they caught Melissa kissing another man in the car. And the mother was like, oh my God, oh my God. Kissing a guy. I know. But whether this is true or not, this is what Margaret, Melissa's friend, right? I think you should tell Melissa. But then I thought the mom gave bad advice because she's like, I feel like you should tell her. I feel like you should tell Melissa. And I'm just like, Danielle, I get that you you know you your mom y'all close y'all kiki y'all do all that don't listen to your mama because she about to get you in trouble like stop like stop do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars like literally just stay where you at because she uh, it is what it is but i'm just like girl <laughs> 
But um, side note, I do like um, Danielle's personality and I do like her interaction with her kids and her husband. You can tell that they love each other. They have a great banter back and forth. So, you know, it's cool. Um, so then we see John and Rachel, they're driving to a adoption attorney and they get there and Rachel, you know, she wants to ad adopt Jaden, which is her stepson. And they, she comes to realize from the attorney that, you know, the mother still has rights. You know, they're going to serve the mother with papers when they find her. And she has 45 days to appeal or, you know, counterclaim or, you know, get an attorney so she could fight the case. Um, and my whole thing with Rachel is I get her situation. I get that she was basically the acting mother for her, like Jaden his whole life. Cool. I have no qualms with that. But I feel like she should give the mother some type of grace um, because you did take care of her child and you stepped up to the plate but we like i said we don't know what's going on i don't need to know it's none of my business but i just feel like at some point she might be going through a lot and then you have to look at it that she's about to basically lose all rights to her child she's about to basically not have access to him and probably lose him forever you know so it's one of those things where it's just like yes i get where rachel's coming from she's upset that she's like why do we have to ask this woman she wasn't there this that, and the third but it's just like you don't know what psychological or how this can affect this woman so it's just like i feel like at the end of the day she should just trust her process because nine times out of ten damn near ten out of ten they're gonna win anyway because it's already proven that his mother hasn't been there for him and then the courts will look at it like i mean why step up now so all i can say is good luck to them but i feel like she should extend a little bit of grace just so you know you don't have to berate her like i said i don't know what, what happened don't need to know but it's just like you're gonna be fine like you're his mother you know he, you're his mother and the papers will prove that you're his mother period um so we head over to jen and bill's house and no, she's showing her daughter like the garters for the um whole um for the bride that like, what they wear and the daughter and her mom and um jennifer her daughter just talked talk about like lingerie this and the third and you know she basically blames margaret she's like you know margaret you expose all this stuff about me and bill and now my daughter's over here trying to pick out lingerie for me because she wants me to stay with daddy da 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 and i'm just like Jen, at some point, you got to take accountability of your own household and not keep blaming Margaret. Yes, Margaret blasted you, but don't act like you didn't blast Margaret about her her kids, that you didn't over here talk about Margaret as well. Y'all been going back and forth, and y'all both don't want to take accountability. So for you to be like, oh, my daughter talk about lingerie now because of Margaret. No, ma'am. Y'all talk about lingerie because y'all have that conversation, not because of Margaret. She was the catalyst, but you still having a conversation with her right right but um they basically talk about you know sh she come back she was like, okay how was it when i left he was like you know everything was good she was like do you spend time with the kids basically it boils down to that he did not spend time with them kids <laughs> he was like look i'm at work you know i'm tired and i feel like i get what she's saying like at some point in time like you should have to spend time with your kids you are their father and you know when it comes to like discipline, the therapist was saying that, you know, it's better coming from him, this, that, and the third. But I feel like she doesn't realize that he is a doctor. That is a stressful job. Like that's a lot of pressure that, you know, I, I, I feel like he's a plastic surgeon maybe. I don't really know. But I just feel like, you know, especially after the whole co the whole Coco in the panty, I feel like, you know, a lot of people have been stressed that's been in the healthcare field so you know i feel like she could give him a little slack on it but ultimately they they're trying to meet in the middle and like work on the relationship bill's like yeah you know i don't think we should go back to the um she asked him do you want to go back to therapy he was like yeah i don't think we need it it's more so on a you thing and not a me thing and i'm just like okay here he go <laughs> we're transported over and we see Teresa. they're at a bridal shop trying and her she brought her daughters and they're trying on um dresses for the wedding and she's like oh my god y'all look so pretty oh my god i love it and the girls look really cute they call um their father joe this was her best trip ever of course of course joe you know what i told her this morning i'm gonna keep praying every day that um and you know, Teresa starts getting emotional cause she's just like, hey Joe, how you doing? You know, I pray for our daughters that, you know, you're allowed to come back to the US and and, and you know, low key ain't gonna hold you. I almost lost it because I really was about to like break down in tears because I just literally had a flashback of when they first was on the show, their parents were alive, they were together, they seemed like they were thriving to now. 
Like that's so much that has happened in like a decade for them that all you can do is just like feel bad. And I'm happy that they're in a great place and you know, they still love there and you know, the daughters start tearing up. My ladies are happy and things are, you know, going the way they are. And I appreciate everything that you're doing over there for my kids because you know, I can't be there and yeah. everybody. So I'm just happy for that. But it's just sad to see where they started to where they're, where's, where they're at now. Here go to Margaret. I feel this is Margaret's first solo scene with her people and like out and about. So she's over here with Lexi, Lexi's mom and her mother and, the, and they talking about, you know. I'm happy that you moved in with us because you know, you're divorced and we wanna make sure that everything is gonna be good for you. You have been there for me and so I'm gonna be there for you So, so they're doing all that, this, that and the third, but then they bring up Teresa and I'm just like, at the end of the day, let it go. Cause the mother talk about, oh, Teresa has been so nasty to John Melissa. Maybe so, but y'all wanna act so one-sided and make it seem like it's just Teresa. Yes, Teresa be doing some messy, stuff but don't act like joe melissa don't either like that's the whole thing that pisses me off like own your part that you play and then all the girls on the show need to own their part too because y'all are facilitating this mess as well with the mother over here bringing up it's like girl you got invited to her wedding so that means she at least somewhat cordial with you like girl what you need to do is mind your business and play the background like so we see um joe and melissa and you know antonia she there over here congratulating her for making the honor roll they're like oh my god my baby uh, uh, uh. all this right so she talked about going to college outside of new jersey and you know away from her parents and i think that's really good because it's like it's it would um give her independence that's something i wanted my baby brother to do because i wanted him to like get from underneath his mama a booby and gain some independence on his own so I agree with that. They basically go outside and they surprise her with a car. She's over here hysterically crying. You already know how to be everybody do. So she turned 17, they're like, here's a car, you're such a great kid, blah, 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 blah. So they go inside and Joe and Melissa talk about the whole Antonio comment and how she cried during painting the wall thing. I told you what happened with Antonia. I was one of her lowest blows i like gave up to the point that i won't even argue with her anymore yeah, she's like at this point i'm done i give up i'm over it and like i said before it's just like now you're done after 10 years of this bull now you're done literally i've been done after year two like uh, anybody got time but at the end of the day good because i'm done too um so we see dolores and frank they meet um out for lunch you know paul thought it would be a good idea for you know dolores to meet him to hear him out like talk about your feelings and she's like this is so weird for us because we don't talk about feelings we don't do that that's not what we do like we just get through it and call it a day and keep it pushing and i was like and this is why you're in that situation dolores because y'all she's like we never talked about um we never told our kids that we're divorced we not nah, 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 all this i'm just like that's why y'all here y'all don't know y'all y'all haven't set boundaries when y'all were younger so now y'all have damn near you try to set boundaries and it's gonna make frank feel some type of way at the end of the way, Frank is just like, yes, she's in another relationship, so you got to figure out, like, hey, she don't need to be under you like that. Like, he's like, yeah, you know, you're my best friend, you're da 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 All she's asking for is some type of boundary. Like, you don't need to call me every day. You got a whole girlfriend yourself, and I'm over here chasing after a man, and you know, my man, my man, my man, you know, that's the Lord's thing, her man, her man, her man. So, yeah. But, you know, like I said, I get both sides, but I do feel like when, you know, Frank is talking to Dolores, they bring up this whole family dinner. Well, Polly not, doesn't come. Polly will definitely be coming to that. But that's not a place for Polly. What are you talking about? It's not, it's our family, it's the Wait four a second. of us. Because um, her son got a job, and Dolores is like, yeah, you know, that's really great. Um, you know, uh, Paul's definitely coming to that. And then Frank's like, um, that's not a place for him. She's like, why not? Like, why, why not? Like, why can't he come? He's like, it should just be the four of us. And Dolores is confused because she's just like, look, we're both in serious relationships. They should be there to celebrate our kids. I agree, but then I disagree as well because I have step parents on both sides, right? At the end of the day, especially with grown ass kids, when I want to celebrate me, I don't need number one and number two to come celebrate me. All I need for me, like if it's me and my sister, I just need my mom and my dad. Y'all two can play your position. Y'all don't need to be celebrating me. We just need us. So I actually do agree where it's just like at the end of the day, Dolores does have to realize that your son and your daughter did not marry Paul. You're about to, you know? So it's just like when it's those situations, like it was a situation at my graduation, right? I had to, um, to go to my graduation and outside, everybody can come. Inside, only four tickets. So 
my grandma, my mom, my sister, my dad. I, did, I did, couldn't give one for my dad's wife. I couldn't give one for my mom's husband. Why? Because those are my core four, period. But you know, they come to an understanding and she's just like, you know, at the end of the day, like Paul's in my, going to be in my life and that's just what it is. He's like, okay, you know, okay, I get that. And you know, they basically bear the hatchet and they realize that, okay, we're just gonna invite Paul and Brittany and we're just gonna all come together. And I'm like, okay, cool. Okay, so now it's bridal shower time. All the ladies um, start arriving. They're looking really nice. So Teresa, she's in the car. She's talking to her daughters, and they don't. She don't even know that's a surprise because they basically said they're going out for lunch, right? And in the middle of her talking to her daughters about you know having boyfriends and not having a boyfriend, not dating, Louis calls. So Louis calls um, Mr. Peace and Namaste. Yeah. So he's like, okay, who are we inviting to the restaurant? Okay. Yes, I'm driving. Uh, I'm right, um, next Thursday because you know they're having um a um, celebration before their wedding. Cool, and you know he started going down the list. We're inviting this person. We're inviting this person. We're inviting Jesus. We're inviting Buddha. We're inviting Namaste. We're inviting Rosa Parks. We're inviting Oprah. We're inviting all these people, right? And then they were like, yeah, you know, Joe and Melissa, they're not coming. They're not invited. Um, Dolores plus one, Marcus plus one, Jennifer plus one, Jackie plus one. Those people just to put the invite out to all of them. Except Melissa, Joe. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Teresa, like we're on camera. We're on camera. Oh, we're filming, we're filming. Just like, and scene. What well, Portia say, and scene for the actress. This is what I say with, with Louis, his car always show. Like before, like I said before, like they wanted to like beat the horse so much. Like I said last season, y'all over here trying to run this man off. He, it's, you don't have to do it because he gonna show it regardless whoever he is or whoever who he truly is they're gonna see that so that's why I'm just like y'all were all so press over like he's doing this he's doing that if Teresa wanna be in her love bubble let her be in her love bubble because best believe when he become his true self and pop the bubble it is what it is right so yeah you know she basically said you know we didn't invite everybody we didn't invite everybody and like I said the moment the moment in the, on the hot mic little situation was just shady I'm just like that's why they look at you crazy, Teresa, because they think you fake. Like it seems fake. Sorry. Um. Um. But also, um, when she tell her daughter, she's just like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we need to invite everyone to the party because it's just, it's just over oh, our family, and it's just the right thing to do. And Melania is like, why? Why? Just very annoyed. And I'm just like, you can tell that she talks about, or uh, in their family, they talk about Joe and Melissa so openly that the that the daughters have strong opinions about them. <laughs> all right, y'all. So Teresa comes in. She says her um, surprise. All that. She basically compliments everybody. Thanks them for coming. Coming. My sister-in-law from California. Where else? Rosanna, thank you, baby. Yeah. Lisa Fortunato, Nicole, Ada Torciello. Well, if it wasn't for Dana, I would have never met Louie. She does not um, compliment um, Melissa. Melissa Melissa's just like, you know, I understand. Cool, it's fine. I don't deserve it because we're not cool. And I'm happy that she said that because I'm just like, girl, be realistic. Be serious. And it was just crazy a little bit because I'm just like, all the people talking about, oh my God, that's so crazy. She did not say nothing to Melissa. I'm Could she just not say, I'm just so happy my sister in law's here and that we're moving on a good way? Thank you guys. I can keep going on and on. Yeah. I'm just like, y'all act like there's not 10 years of beef between the two. Why would she say anything to Melissa? Why? So the girls are just being unrealistic at this point. I'm just like, whatever. But um, that was basically the end of the episode. Um, and they all do like this henna dance and you know it was really cute um but yeah that was the end of the episode and like i said i'm trying to figure out when are we about to go to the finale because <coughs> next week is still another episode i'm just like damn can we get to the point at this point but y'all like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace